My name is Katherine Garlow, and I'm a Nephrology Fellow at Brigham and Women's Hospital. I am pleased to discuss a recent publication titled, Kidney Biomarkers and Decline in Estimated Glomerular Filtration Rate in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes. This research was conducted using data and samples from the examination of cardiovascular outcomes with alloglyptin versus standard of care, otherwise known as the examined trial. Serum creatinine is the most widely used biomarker of kidney function in clinical practice and drug development. However, it has major limitations in delayed time to rise after kidney injury and variation in muscle mass. Alternative kidney markers are being developed that may provide early recognition of kidney injury and improve prediction of individuals at risk of chronic kidney disease progression. Serum cystatin C is a marker of glomerular filtration whereas KIM-1 and NGAL are markers of tubular injury. These three biomarkers have demonstrated potential as indicators of CKD progression. However, there are limited data on the value of repeated measurements over time, and prior studies did not evaluate effects on risk stratification or prediction. To help address this knowledge gap, we analyzed the associations and prognostic significance of serum cystatin C, urinary NGAL, and urinary KIM-1 in predicting estimated glomerular filtration rate decline. We analyzed 5,367 individuals with type 2 diabetes and recent acute coronary syndrome enrolled in the examined trial. Biomarkers were measured at baseline and six months, and participants were followed for a mean of 1.5 years. The primary outcome was a composite of 50% decrease in EGFR, EGFR less than 15 milliliters per minute, or dialysis. The primary outcome occurred in 98 individuals, or 1.8% of the total cohort. All biomarkers individually were associated with significantly higher risk of EGFR decline. However, Following adjustment for baseline EGFR, proteinuria, and clinical factors, only baseline cystatin C and the change in urinary NGAL to creatinine ratio at six months were independently associated with decline in EGFR. A base model including nine standard clinical characteristics strongly predicted EGFR decline with a C statistic of 0.93. The addition of cystatin C improved discrimination slightly to a C statistic of 0.94, but failed to significantly improve risk classification. Neither urinary NGAL nor KIM-1 improved prediction. Limitations of the study include short length of follow-up. Further, our population was at relatively low risk of EGFR decline, and our findings reflect the excellent predictive ability of traditional risk factors including demographics, comorbidities, and baseline EGFR, leaving little room for meaningful improvement in discrimination with biomarkers. In summary, our data suggests that single or repeated measures of kidney biomarkers of glomerular filtration and tubular injury offer at most minimal incremental prognostic value for the short-term prediction of EGFR decline in individuals with type 2 diabetes. Additional data from diverse populations on serial measures of kidney biomarkers over time are needed to further assess utility in risk stratification and prediction modeling. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology, all rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified healthcare provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast of the American Society of Nephrology. Thank you.